Hey guys, this is Greg from Purpose Blogger. I'm trying something new today where I take someone else's photo, with their permission of course, and I perform my own set of edits. For now I'm just calling this What Would Greg Do? And if people like this, maybe I'll look at making this into a regular series. So my goals for this are really twofold. First, I just want this to be an exercise in creativity. Two people can look at the same raw photo and envision very different landing points. I also sometimes may intentionally try to take the image in a different direction from the original edit just to see what happens. So in the end, we'll look at both versions and I'll post a poll and you can vote for what your favorite is. But the goal here isn't really to declare a winner. It's really just about embracing the creative process and seeing what we might learn along the way. Everyone has their own taste, their own style, their own post-processing techniques and audience, all of which may influence how they edit an image. So the goal one is just the creative process. Goal two, hopefully you're gonna learn something along the way. I do have two decades of experience working with Photoshop and loads of hours working uh, in Lightroom. So if you see post-processing techniques, hopefully you're gonna learn something. If you have any questions about my edits, just go ahead and post them in the comments below. I might go a little fast on some of these, but if you have questions, again, just post them below. So we'll see what we can learn. We're gonna have fun along the way. That's enough talk. Let's dive right in. So you've been staring on screen already at today's image for a little while. This is Instant Pot Gingerbread Cheesecake for Two from Julia, who blogs over at imagelicious.com. So first, thank you, Julia, so much for being brave and agreeing to let me use your image for this video. And second, I'm going to place a link to Julia's blog down below in the comments. So after you view this, jump on over to her blog. She has lots of yummy recipes, beautiful food. So make sure you give her a follow. So here on screen, this is the raw, unedited version of Julia's photo. I'm just gonna jump over to Photoshop real quick where I have both the original raw file and then also Julia's edit. So here, if we look on screen, that's the raw file right there. And then if I unclick that, we'll see this is Julia's edits. So she definitely made significant changes to the photo. She's really brightened things up and up the contrast. Now I think just looking at this, I'm gonna end up taking it a little bit darker. And for me, these lights here may maybe become a little distracting. So I am gonna go a little bit different direction, but that is, again, the whole idea behind this creative process. So let me jump back over to Lightroom and I will start my edits there. So I will just start coming down here. I always like to check and make sure profile corrections are turned on. And so you see that right there. If you just look at that there, it gets rid of some of the lens vignetting there. So turn that on and then I will come back here and usually start in the basic panel here. Now I can see from the histogram here that these whites are getting blown out here. So if you hover above this triangle, you can show the highlight clipping. And so all these lights here are really getting blown out. That's what we're seeing on the right side of the histogram here. So I'm gonna try to bring that back. So I'll start by dragging the exposure down a fair amount. And I'm not so much worried about down here. What I'm really doing is starting with this part of the image up here, seeing if I can sort of recover a little bit of detail in those lights there. And if you hold down the Alt key when you drag things like highlights and whites and stuff, you can start to see a black and white overlay. And that's basically gonna show you those white areas or anything that's still being blown out. So I'll drag the highlights down just so I can start recovering. I'll bring my white point down a little bit. So I'm just trying to just recover the detail back in those lights. So right there, that's pretty good. Now I know things have gotten dark here, but again, uh, I'm, I'm looking at things one thing at a time, and I really do like this area more than when it was blown out before. So now I like to go in here, and I am going to, first of all, bring my black point down a little bit. I usually like to add blacks, a little bit more blacks in, and you do that by dragging down on the black slider here. And again, you can see anything that gets clipped up here, nothing's being clipped. If I drag this out, you could see it starts to get clipped right here. But so again, I like to have pretty full range a lot of the time, and so I'll just drag my blacks down. Usually I don't drag them down that much, but maybe five or 10. So let's just do nine right there. So I have that, and now I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, and I think I will jump in next to my radial filter, and I think I sort of want a beam of light to cut right across here. I really want this here to stand out as the star. So I will just go ahead and start dragging. And then again, you can rotate these. You can drag out by any point. If you alt and drag out, then you can drag out just a single point. And again, if you need more room up here, you can play around with your zoom. 
So 1 to 4, if I go something like 4 to 1, 1 16, there. So you can really zoom in and out however you need, whatever you need to do. So you can really position this exactly like you want. So something like but that, I will go back to fit to window here. And I'm double clicking effect just to make sure everything's zeroed out. And now as I drag up exposure, what it's doing is it's dragging up everything outside. By default, when you drag out a radial filter like this, it's going to do what's outside. You can hit the invert key down there. Or also, if you use the apostrophe on your keyboard, it will also do that invert for you. And then you can feather that however you need to. So I just want to take that and I'm going to use this to really bump up the exposure inside on these two cheesecakes. And I will go ahead and I will also bring in even more blacks. We're going to pump the contrast of these a fair amount. Saturation will take up slightly on these. I'm also going to bring up the clarity a little bit. And as you bring up clarity, a lot of times you'll have to balance that out by bringing up some shadows. Otherwise, sometimes it's just a little heavy handed. OK, so there right there, I think that's decent. Uh, I sometimes I also do this where sometimes I will duplicate this area. I'm going to bump it ever so slightly so I can keep these points separate and see which is which. And then I will go ahead and invert that. So this one is actually back to working on the background. And I'm going to zero out the effect. And this one I'm going to drag down. So again, I'm using one point to make this brighter. And I'm using the other one to darken down everything else. And I'm really what I want to just do is I'm trying to just suck the focus of the viewer. You know, really just pull them in here uh, to this. So I drag everything down there. Again, feather that out a fair amount. If I come back to this one here, uh, I think that's okay because I'm going to add another one here. So again, duplicate. Actually, I don't want to duplicate. Let me just undo. So control Z to undo what I just did there. And I'll just go ahead and create a new one here. So click on new. I will drag out another one. And again, I need to invert that so it's inside. And so this one here, I'm putting over this one particular cup here. Drag that out. And again, it needs to be set here. So what I'm doing is just really trying to make this the focus here. So something like a half stop of exposure. I will go ahead and duplicate this, but make it much smaller. So drag in here and drag in here, rotate that a little bit. And so what I'm doing here is just sort of setting up those sort of points of interest. And so I'm going to put that on these cookies here. And then maybe I'll duplicate another one and I'll bring it back here just to have a little bit of light spilling on this, but I don't want quite as much. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So again, I'm using all these radial filters just to pick out different areas and control where some of the light's hitting, where some of it's spilling. This one here, I could duplicate that. Maybe bring it over here just so you get a touch on this cookie here in the front. So again, you want this to be subtle, but you're just sort of controlling where the eye goes. And so I'll step out of this radio filter now. And so if I just use the backslash on my keyboard, we can already see that we've gone from here to here to here to here. So you see the way we really have this light cutting across the center of the image here, and I really like that. So at this point, I think for this particular image, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to Photoshop. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to go edit in. I'm going to do open as smart object in Photoshop. So give it a second and it should pop up there. And the reason why I opened it as a smart object, because now if I double click in here, I can still open up Camera Raw, which essentially is exactly the same as Lightroom. So if I need to make adjustments and changes here, this is all still very editable. I like my workflow to be as non-destructive as possible. So opening something as smart object, you're not compressing an image down yet. You still have option to all these highlights. You can see some of the adjustments I made in Lightroom. They all carry over to right here. So I'll just go ahead and click Cancel Out for now, but that's there if I need it. Let me just start by zooming in here so I can see a little bit better what's going on. 
Now I don't see too much touch up here, but usually what I'll do is create a layer just where I'm going to do any touch up on a different layer uh, above anything. But so let's see, there are a couple little spots here and here, not much, but I might go ahead and get rid of those. So I'll just grab my spot healing brush and I will get my brush size to adjust here. You can do it here. You can also just use the bracket keys on your keyboard to make it larger or smaller. Sort of get over that and sort of make sure I have sample all layers. Usually you can do, so let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that there. Maybe get rid of that there. So again, not much, very subtle, but just taking away some of those spots. So if I turn it on and off, you can see just a little bit of cleanup. Little things that might distract the viewer's eyes. Now it's not a lot there, but I still like to do that kind of cleanup. And other images you're going to have where you have even more of that to do. If you have dust on your sensor or whatever, little things that are distracting, you can use the spot healing brush just for some quick cleanup. Next thing I might want to do is I'm going to try to just maybe work on these lights a little bit here. So again, these lights are still a little bright for my taste here. I may bring them down a little bit it may be full with the color a little bit. So I think I'll do that with a curves layer. So I'll go ahead and do curves here. And I think I'll jump in. Maybe I'll take all of them here. So if I come up here, so again, these are my shadows. These are my highlights. So if I go like this, I may pull down slightly. And as you do that, you see I'm taking the highlights down slightly. So I may take highlights of everything down a little bit. And then I may also jump down to my blue layer and if I start to drag down on this, what I'm doing is I'm introducing some yellow by taking some blue out. And so I may do that a little bit just to make those lights a little bit more yellow. And again, I want this really to just affect those highlights there. So what I'm going to do is come over and here I'm going to do color range and I'm going to go highlights. And so you see I'm really just looking to have it affect uh, those dots there and so if you come on the range here you can sort of control you know how much is being used and what the fuzziness is there is sort of like uh, let's go with something like that and again here's my mask here I'm really gonna paint black on anything down in this lower half of the image here so I'm sort of painting out and leaving this just so if we alt click here you can see I'm really painting out all this stuff here. I'm not interested in doing anything to that. I'm really just trying to take those lights and lower them down a little bit and introduce in a little bit more yellow. So let me just see what these other things are. Yeah, that there, I'm okay with that there. So again, all I did was just sort of dull these down a little bit and add a little bit of yellow into those highlight areas. You know, that's good, but everything here is still really too dark for me, or excuse me, too bright uh, in terms of the background there, the darker areas, at least the shadow area. So I'll just grab another curves adjustment. And with this, I'm going to come down here into my shadows, start to drag down just to darken everything down. Again, I want this to be really moody, and I want there to be a pop between the background here and then the, the brighter areas of that. So again, there's that, but again... Let me hit D to get my default colors back. So white is now my foreground color. And X to reverse that. So I bring up my black. And then on my mask here, again, I'm painting this in. So I am just affecting the background there. Although I don't mind it spilling a little bit here too. So I'll actually reverse that. And I'll bring a little bit into the front there. And then if I come here, I want to soften all this. So I'm going to feather this out a good bit alt back and so then again here let me just fit things to the window here again bring in that background make that a lot darker start to push the eye into some of the brighter spots here I know we do have some contrasts up here between the lights and all that of course but I still really want to bring the brighter spots of the image into this central line of the image there right there all right next thing I want to do is add a little bit more interest to this towel here it's not quite popping the way I'd like it to. I want it to be more of a point of focus. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool and I'm not going to make a perfect selection by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm basically just going to go loosely around that hand towel there. 
Now I missed a little bit in this upper corner here, so I'll just do Shift Plus and grab that. So again, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll work for what we're gonna do. And then let me come back down here, adjustments, again curves, you may be able to tell I like my curves layers. And so then what I will do is I may take the overall, just add a little bit more contrast by dragging down all my blacks up on my highlights there. And then in the blue channel, I'm gonna introduce more blue into this towel. And then also come in under the green channel and I'll, I'll pull a little bit of that out again. Just full on with the color there. And again, this whole thing, I want to feather this a fair amount just to soften the edge. Okay, I also want to maybe change up this red here. So what I will do is again, do a new curves layer. And this time I'm going to come here, I'm going to select color range and I could try reds. I think I'll do sample colors then. Then I can use the eyedropper tool and basically what I'm going to do is use my eyedropper tool along with shift to add more colors and I'm going to really try to add in all the colors to get all the red and again this is sort of showing me a black and white preview with the white being anything that's selected the black not selected so I want to make sure I get my entire cup here trying to get all the reds that are in this image and again, this is going to be a mask, so I can adjust it later, but let's try that. I will go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to come in under my curves here. I will go to the reds, and I'm pulling the reds out. I'm going to try to make this nice green color by pulling out the reds. So something like that. I like that tone a fair amount. I feel like it goes with the cooler tones of that. So again... There it is there. And I just have to look and look for spots where I don't want it to come in. I don't want it to show up anywhere up here. So DX painting with black. Let's see. Just wanted to change the color of those. So there we have it. I like that. Okay, at this point I made stamp visible. So that's Control Alt Shift E just to create a layer above everything else. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead. Well, let me fit this to screen so we can see a little better. Uh, filter blur Gaussian blur. Again, there's detail up here which I don't need, and I actually like it better when the lights in the background are blurred out a fair amount. So I'm going to go ahead and add a decent amount of blur to those. And again, what I'll just do is add a mask and then white to black gradient and I will paint it in. So that is on my background. So if we look at the mask, I'm basically, let me just alt click, show you, I'm basically fading that out. So that blur is now on the lights in the background but not at the foreground. I don't really need all that information. That's actually gonna make my file size smaller for something like a web as your final output. That's actually something you want anyways. I think we're just on to some final touches now. So maybe I would just add the slightest bit of contrast. And I don't want this to be everywhere, so Control i will invert that mask for me. I have white as my foreground, and I'm just going to sort of paint back some of that contrast over this area here, just what I want to be my focal point. So if I just do an Alt-click so we can see, I'm just really painting that in here. And so again, turning that on and off, very subtle, but just adding a little bit more contrast there to make that pop out. And then for a final thing, let me do a Control alt e to do a stamp visible layer. I'm going to go filter other high pass, filter other high pass, and this is just to add a little sharpening here. So what I will do is drag this just so I can start to see just the edge of some of those areas there. So that's all I really need there. And I will change this to overlay mode, and that's going to just 
help right along there. And if you think you need more, you can always hit Control J, sharpen that. I'm going to add it down to one layer. And again, I'll add the mask there. Alt when I add the mask here. Zoom in. Because I don't want this everywhere. So I'll just take my brush tool. So brush tool. And I'm just painting back that sharpening where I need it. Now my computer's getting mad at me here. Sometimes when I first change my brush size, it makes me do that. And then my bracket keys suddenly start working. Don't know what that's all about. But so again, just painting back a little sharpening here, a little sharpening here, a little sharpening there, just the areas where I want the viewer's focus. I don't need it a lot of places. Again, you put it places you don't need, it's just going to be distracting and it's going to raise the file size up. So again, boom, that to that. So turn it off, turn it on. You can really notice it down here. You can notice it up here. Maybe harder over this, this view here. You can notice it on the spoon there. So just a little bit of sharpening. And I'm going to call that my final image. So let's take a look at what I did and what Julia did. So here we are back looking at the raw file right here. And then we can jump over to see these are Julia's edits. And then here are the edits I just made. So again, completely different directions. One's not necessarily right, but again, here's the raw image. Here's what Julia did. And then here is what I did. So you can vote in the poll up in the right. Did I take Julia's image and did I ruin it? Or did I make it better? Or did we both blow it? Make your votes now. Thanks for watching this, Julia. Thanks for contributing this image. Again, guys, check out our blog in the comments below. Give her a follow. And if anybody else wants to contribute an image to this sort of exercise, go ahead and drop a link below to your image. I'll take a look. If, and if I like it, if it's something I want to work at, uh, work on, I'll get in contact with you. Thanks again. This is Greg, and this has been the first episode of What Would Greg Do?